Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and today I thought we would just do something really fun. So let's get started. Let's do a little mix up of challenges. I wanna do an art prompt challenge with my little art prompts that I've written out on my little pretty hearts. And I wanna pick a color palette out of my color palette, my color cube. Um, this is deck two out of the color cube. And I want to then paint a whole bunch of little mini squares and then peel the tape and cut them up and see what we get just because it sounds fun. So let's just pull a color palette, just a blind pull. I haven't looked through all of these. I don't know what color we're going to get. <gasps> oh, oh, now I'm kind of feeling pretty excited about today's color palette. I love these dusty blues and the little pops of orange. Okay, all right, so palette number 346 out of cube number two. All right, ha ha ha, getting pretty excited about that. Let's pull a couple of little hearts and we could be painting and pull some little hearts and see what we get. So I've got add some bold marks and some sets of lines. Okay, that's pretty good. I might pull some more as we're going if I think what else could we do? Okay, all right, super fun. Let me pull some paints out and I will be right back. And I've already taped my paper down. I'm working in a large piece of 12 by 16 uh, Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press watercolor paper. And I have taped that down with um, painter's tape. I have a couple different sizes that I'd seen at one time, so I don't usually use this half inch size. I usually use this one inch size, but I kind of want the lines to be similar in size when I cut these apart. So I've just taped the edge and then when I cut these down the center when we're done, hopefully I'll have a nice little edge all around my little mini pieces art here. Um, so I'm just using painter's tape from the store. Okay, so let me gather some paints and I'll be back. All right, let's see what we have here. I have pulled out my Ganzai Tambi graphite colors and I have pulled out graphite blue. So I was thinking that might be a fun contrast to some of the other things that I've got going here and just to see how it would react with these other things. And then I was pulling out acrylic paints. So I think I might want to put acrylic on top maybe. So I actually then pulled out um, light gray, which is um, a Sennelier. Uh, watercolor and I pulled out Chinese orange which is Sennelier watercolor and then I pulled out Lunar Earth from Daniel Smith for this brown. It's kind of thinking that this could be um, a charcoal or a black so I might pull out my graphite my liquid graphite stuff because you know I like playing with the graphite that could be my bold marks uh, possibly so just thought we'd play. I also pulled out some of the Neo Color 2 uh, crayons, the pastels. This is the gray, and I pulled out Prussian blue, black. I pulled out uh, Roto Orange, Rot Orange, R O T Orange, a Flame Red. I don't know, there's, there's a couple different languages, which is the right one. So we'll call it Flame Red, because that's the last one. And this one is Cinnamon. Okay, so I was kind of thinking right along these lines here, just getting as close as I could to the colors. My goal is to not to match the colors 100%. My goal is to get close and work within this similar color palette, which is probably a color palette that I would not have pulled out to work on uh, myself. So I just want to have some fun. So I'm gonna put some of these colors out on a plate. That's a little hors d'oeuvre plate. I like working on little uh, white hors d'oeuvre plates that I can get at TJ Maxx pretty cheap. <laughs> they make nice photo props. They're fun to sit in the frame of filming. <laughs> They're perfect for watercolor and acrylic paint. And let's put this gray out. Oop, that one's been not been used for a while. So let's go ahead and sop up this liquid coming out of it first. There we go. Um, and it's sustainable, so you're not throwing paper away 
when you're using watercolors. So I love that about these. And I might get a little spray bottle, activate my graphite blue, and then we can get started. So the goal here is to not worry about what's on each piece of paper. I'm treating this like it's one gigantic canvas basically. And I wanna draw and mark make and just see what we get. And when we're all done, we'll see how we did with our color palette. Don't forget we've got our sets of lines and our add some bold marks. So I do, I might do stenciling on top. I might do lines on top. There's just no telling what we'll end up doing as we're going. Cause we're kind of going with the flow, seeing what feels good. So I am, I think, gonna start out with some marks just to break the white page. Um, I call that white page paralysis because sometimes you're just scared to even get started. And we may see these lines and we may not. Just depends on when I'm done, how much stuff I've laid on top. But now I've made it where we have gotten started and we've already messed up the page and so now I'm not stuck with oh, I don't want to mess up that white paper I have already messed up that white paper and we could do this whole thing with the neo color crayons and I had somebody ask me if I was ambidextrous because um, they see me draw with both hands um, and I can't actually write my name with my left hand because I had a friend when I was a kid that broke her arm and I was so jealous watching her write with either hand. <laughs> um, but I use my non-dominant hand for a reason. It lets you let go of trying to be perfect with your marks and your lines and the things that you do because you have less control over these movements. It's less practiced. It's less perfect. Um, so that's kind of why I do that uh, because I want to let go of some of those constraints that I kind of put on myself when I'm trying to be too perfect with something. And one of our prompts is sets of lines. So why not let's just go ahead and do some lines and these might show where they might not, but we're already being inspired by the prompts that we have. And I'm doing them all a little different, but you know, kind of similar. It's a, it's a repeating element throughout the collection. Okay, that's super fun. Let's do some more over here. This is a great way to discover new mark making things that you might want to do. Um, the other thing on here is add some bold marks. So we could do that with these also. We can do that on top when we're done also. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling like let's go ahead and jump in with some watercolor. And I'm just using my Zero Raphael quill brush. Um, whoa! <laughs> okay, so I actually was thinking that'd be a little bit lighter and it probably would if I had done this right here. <laughs> but that almost is like my darkest color and then as I let it get lighter and lighter, it is my lightest color. <laughs> How about that? Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, totally was a surprise there. <laughs> and if we put water there on our Neo color crayon. Look at how we can move that around, and that's actually a much brighter color than I had thought it would be, uh, than it looked when we drew it on there. So that's exactly why I do stuff like this to kind of learn and be like, oh, check out what that did that I did not expect. Fun stuff. All right. Ooh, I like how that blended with that brown. All right, so let's just jump into some of these other colors and then I will, we're gonna fill this up eventually, but let's just go for it. Little mini abstracts. We don't really know what we're gonna have when we're done, which I love. 
So this color is actually really similar to that graphite, but the difference in that graphite is it has graphite particles in it. And we could take a spoon and buffer that in the end if we wanted to bring some of that graphite sheen out. That's kind of a benefit to the graphite, depending on how thick we put that on there. Let's go for this Lunar Earth, which is this brownie color in our piece. All right, let's get some of this Chinese orange in there and just see what we get. So don't be afraid to like do some fun marks and lines with the colors. You don't have to just use it as straight watercolor. Um, so that's kind of an interesting take on getting some bold marks in there, drawing lines with our brush or some lots of lines where we've done lines with that watercolor. Look how good that turned out. So we could do, we could interpret these prompts in different ways with the different ways that we manipulate that watercolor with our brush. And you don't have to cover all the space. You can leave white space if white space if you like it. You can leave white space. All right, I kind of like that as a first layer. I'm kind of thinking I want to add some other layers on top. So maybe we can get out some acrylic paint to do some layers on top. I might could do some stenciling. I could do some cardboard where I'm pressing in color. That could be a stencil. Um, we could get creative here. I could use a catalyst wedge with some paint and do some lines. I'm just kind of spitballing ideas here with you. Let me let this dry and I'll be right back. All right, I have just kind of looked through the different stencils that I've got. I've pulled out the bubble stencil by Tim Holtz layering stencils because it looks looks like Punchinella but it's easier to get I'm sure and I've pulled out this one that looks like lots of squares and bricks and this is um, the crafters workshop TCW248S and this is um, the crafters workshop um, also and I think it's called number scramble um, and I like it. So I thought I'm going to do some stuff with some of these on top and just add an additional layer in there. And I pulled out some acrylic paints that are kind of within the color palette. They may be a shade lighter or a shade darker. I was just pulling um, little Liquitex Basics. These are the little 48 sampler pot. What I like about these is you have 48 of all the colors and you can use them and see what you like and what you love and once you use all the paint in one of your little pots then you're like aha I love that color let me go buy a big one you don't have to buy like a big one right at the beginning you can buy all the colors because you know paint gets expensive so I love it when you can be creative with something like this and test out lots of colors without buying all the big colors okay so I want to do I think I want to do this orange and do these stencilings and you can dab, you can scrub. I've decided I like to scrub. I'm using a dry sponge. This is an artist sponge and <laughs> that's what I wanted right there. Put out some more of this paint. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That totally made it right there. <laughs> Oh, that totally made my day right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why that's what I wanted, but today that is what I wanted. Super fun. Super fun. 
Look at that. It's like we're doing a little bit of graffiti. Not where I thought I'd go today, but that's kind of fun. Like as you're working where you think, oh, this is where I'm going, but where you actually end up going, just kind of ride that wave, go with that flow. Don't worry about it. Don't get hung up and stuck and upset. Just be like, I'm going to ride the art wave today and see where it takes me. And you might discover things that you're like, oh, this is going to be a new element in my art going forward. Maybe I'm a graffiti artist and I didn't know it. <laughs> Or you're like, okay, I definitely am not a graffiti artist and I'm never going this way again. This is how you discover these things. Oh, I love the numbers in these. Oh my gosh. Super fun. Not a color palette I would normally probably gravitate towards, but check it out. You know, we could do white dots. Like we could just throw in white because we're working on white paper so it's almost like we're bringing that color back out um, so I almost think I'm gonna put a white out so this was a cadmium orange hue that I was just using and then this is just titanium white let me get another sponge Oh, 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 oh yeah <laughs> man I just like lots of dots oh yeah perfecto and you could treat these as one big thing and continue the design on like if I wanted these to look like pieces that kind of matched and went together could bleed one right on the other and then when we pull that tape you know we can just see how that that bleed went from one to the other that's super fun too so don't be don't be shy about doing some of that let me get some more white paint out I'm still looking at my prompts there I've got to add some bold marks and sets of lines and I think I think I kind of did some of that underneath and I'm pretty good that we huh I didn't mean to put that there <laughs> that's what happens when I'm talking and I'm a painting um, we did some bold marks and sets of lines so I feel like we did get in to the spirit using those we stayed with our color palette I'm loving that I'm kind of feeling like with this maybe I want to do this sienna and layer some of this on top <laughs> perfecto oh yeah see that's the extra element I'm feeling that right there all right let's come down here oh yeah I'm a loving this I'm a loving this now man you know I love to play and experiment so much because my goal isn't to sell art my goal is to play and have fun and make art videos because that's what I like to do is teach and I've been doing online workshops now for 10 years at least but it started out with photography workshops and then I dabbled a little bit in the art art workshops over the years but two years ago in this 2023 I don't know when you'll be watching this video two years ago I started seriously honing in on the art workshops in addition to photo workshops and I've found that I'm one of those people that doesn't want to sit and create just because like I don't like to create for the fun of it I mean I know that's kind of weird to say but for the fun of it to me means I kind of want a purpose to my creating and that's what makes it fun it gives me a goal to create and creating videos for YouTube and creating art workshops for like Skillshare and photography workshops for my own site it kind of gave me a purpose for experimenting and learning and doing deep dives and different projects and that's kind of kind of like consider each workshop my own personal project and my own deep dive into a subject to figure out and learn things that I'm probably just not gonna sit here and do if it didn't have a reason to do it and so I, that's why I love 
doing these things because now I gave myself a reason to really deep dive into say a color palette challenge or an art prompt challenge and I just wouldn't sit and do it if I didn't have this reason to do it and look at all the things that I learn and play and discover as I'm doing that and so different people have different purposes for their art yours may be to sell art um, or it may be to learn new things or it may be to create workshops like I like to create I mean there's different reasons out there and if you find that purpose Yours may just be for the fun of learning. Um, if you find that purpose, then you're more likely to come to your art table and create and do things more often rather than sitting on the sofa and binge watching television and thinking about getting to it but never getting to it. Look how pretty these are. Okay, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I didn't use that pretty blue there. You know what we could do with that blue? I don't want to waste it. We could do some cardboard. Okay, let me get a let me get a paintbrush. Okay, so I had somebody ask me also, you know, I like to answer people's questions, but sometimes I'll bring it up in videos too. They asked me, do I use my watercolor brushes on acrylic paint? And so I actually researched that because I do. I'm not super precious with my materials. Um, and what I found was uh, I do mix for my acrylic paints, my brushes, uh, with the watercolor. Uh, so what I found was, let me just repeat that 12 times. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like painting and looking and thinking at the same time. If your brushes are synthetic, you can mix watercolor and acrylic with them. If your brushes are natural hair, you'll wanna keep those brushes just for like watercolor because the acrylic paint is much harder on your brushes um, and with the synthetic it's not as big a deal but with the natural hair it is it's gonna it's gonna wear that brush out faster so um, this is an acrylic brush that I use for acrylic paint only though this is a and it's a good photo prop because look how pretty I've painted up the handle there <laughs> this is a Princeton Umbria brush but I don't know what the number is it's somewhere under there and it just happens to be one that's sitting over here that I grabbed. So be creative in your stencil work here. It don't have to be stencils. You can, and you can make some of your own stencils. I have a Skillshare class on making some of your own stencils out of Upo paper because Upo paper is basically plastic and it's perfect for making your own stencils. And you just cut shapes out of it and there you go, you got a stencil. Um, look how fun this is now do we want to do any extra marks in here like with a with a posca pen like we could do some fine lines and dots we could pull an art prompt and see if there's any art things in there that we forgot <laughs> so many things that we could be doing i like dots though so i'm filling dots this is my um, Posca pen with a fine nib, um, with a fine tip nib. I like the fine tip, extra fine, like the very the small, the finest one they have. I don't like the big fat uh, tip. But if it's a bigger piece of art, I like the bigger tip. It kind of like as you get bigger, the things that you're working with need to get bigger. Um, so keep that in mind if you're working on a bigger project um, the tiniest extra fine tip might not be the right scale for a larger piece but I'm working on a little tiny pieces here when I pull apart that this may be the perfect element uh, for these little pieces and you don't have to do it everywhere I'm just kind of thinking in my mind where do I want some of these extra details can't wait to peel these apart and see what we ended up with. I mean, I'm already kind of feeling like, look how cool this one is. I'm kind of feeling this one. These get a little darker. Ah, oh, such fun stuff. Huh, I'm kind of liking that like that. We could peel these and take a look at it. We could add some more marks on top. I'm kind of feeling like if we look at each little piece here, did we have some bold darkness in every piece? I've kind of missed the bold darkness in this piece, but 
Does it need it? Do I need to come back in here, say, with a Neo Color 2 crayon and add some marks? Do we want to see what it looks like without it? Oh, do I need to take the little pencil and add some darkness with that? Hmm. All good options. Let's just leave it like it is for a moment and think about it. So, here we go. We had our five colors from our color challenge and they called the slate gray dark teal orange chocolate and black and so i kind of came close to that with the colors i picked and add sets of lines so i did that several times with that corrugated stencil with the lines with the neo color pastel so i definitely hit that on the mark add some bold marks so there are some bold marks kind of in here with this darker color um, i would not say every piece has something super bold but they are kind of bold with the with the graffiti number thing there so i think we did pretty darn good using that as our guide and if you want to make your own little art prompts this little heart prompts are a video on my channel so you can go check that out and i give you tons of ideas to put as your prompt options and if you check out the comments other people have added some extra prompts in there that they were thinking also okay, i feel like we do need something in here so let's come back with the really dark noir but definitely check out those videos and make up some of your own art prompts um, to pull from and be inspired by uh, you know what we could do with a, we could come back with black pen and put some interesting maybe black dots in there um, this is just one of my little black pens that I use for mark making. Um, you could use those Pigma pens for stuff like this. Like the uh, 05 size or the 01 size would be good. Uh, but I'm just going to add some black dots in here. And what I really love about doing challenges is this is something I never would have created without the challenge. It's like I'm in a, an 11 year long, 365 day project of different things that I wanted to learn and master. Uh, for a decade of that, it was photography subjects. And for, you know, most of my life, it's been art stuff because I've done art things my whole life. Um, but now I'm like, let's test out and play with all the supplies we have. And so that 365 day project has turned into art things to learn and play and grow. <laughs> let's peel some tape. Um, and that's what I love about projects because you just do things that you would never think of. And these are not colors I would have pulled out to go together. So you discover all kinds of cool stuff when you do this. Now if your tape is pulling off your paper, take your little half, your heat gun, your craft heat gun, and heat that up. Heat the tape up because that will release that adhesive. All right, and before we finish, I'm gonna cut these apart. So this is my Fisker's paper cutter. Let me see, I'm gonna go this way. And it's, because it's a 12 inch paper cutter, I'm gonna go in on the 12 inch side. And I'm gonna kind of center these two pieces up. Let's see, do we got that centered basically? Close enough? Close enough, and we're going to chop them up. <laughs> I mean, this is almost good as peeling tape when you get it done and you're peeling it apart. And what I like about these is these things last forever and you can get a little stash of extra blades so when your blade gets dull, and trust me, you'll know when your blade's dull, it starts tearing your paper. Um, you can just replace that blade. It just comes right off of here. Look at these. All right, let's just separate all these off of here. <gasps> oh, 
look how good these look when you get them separated oh my goodness and they're kind of framed out so it like instantly kind of turn that into a little lovely piece of art i love things that have little frames around them like that oh, look at those now we can turn them and look at them in other directions <laughs> all of these are so awesome Ah, see, it stays like this. When you release the expectation, look how good that one turned out. Arr! Might be one of my favorite. Um, when you release these expectations to go with the flow of that day, especially when you're pulling prompts and color palettes that maybe you never even dreamed of. When you let go of what you're expecting to get and you are just willing to be happy with whatever you do get, every day is a good painting day. Look at that one. Okay, that one is another favorite. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, I love the streak of colors coming through the middle of that one. The streak of numbers. <laughs> Oh, just look how finished they look when you cut them apart. I just love that. It's like revealing the tape again. And then these, look at that one. <gasps> Ooh, I love this one. Um, these would be perfect for micro pieces of art. You could float frame them in a frame and have like a great big mat around it. And this could be like the centered uh, piece that you're concentrating on in the frame. Um, so, you know, great big mat, little intro, interesting frame. Um, that would be super cool. This you could mount right to a card and you could send people cards. Oh, I love this one. Um, we could use these as color palette in our color palette book and put the colors that we did with it. There's so many things that you could do with little micro pieces of art. You could use these in your junk collaging. You could use these Oh, look at these. Oh, I could cut these into heart art if I did not absolutely love them, but I'm kind of loving them. Look at this. We have a dozen. Is it a dozen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. I think it is a dozen. A dozen beautiful little pieces of graffiti -ish art that we were inspired by this color palette and these yummy little art prompts. So I hope you enjoyed today's painting session. Oh, artist cards. You could use these as artist trading cards. You could even, you know, tape them off in different shapes than I've done. You could use these as color palette cards and put the color palettes on the back and then use that later for color palette inspiration for yourself and put the materials that you use to get that look. Oh, so many ideas. All right, so I hope you had fun painting with me today. I can't wait to see what you create with this color palette. You can tag me on Instagram if you want to show me what you're working on. You can join the Facebook art group, which you can find in the comments. I have in the uh, description under the video. I'll link all the supplies under the video for you, um, and I'll see you next time. I want to do a good art challenge.